You've heard the joke about the man who named his dogs soap and water so that he could say that every day he washed his dishes with soap and water. Well, I think that is a, an example of how, as a dog trainer, you're suppo I'm supposed to be um, creating the behaviors that I want, but as a proud puppy owner, I grab the camera first. <laughs> But there is something about sharing food that fosters intimacy. Providing food is an act of caregiving, an act of peace. And from the other side, I can think of countless times when someone has directed someone, please do not feed the dog, which only served to make the feeding more surreptitious. Dogs have also perfected the look of abject starvation to which many humans respond easily with the desire to provide food and nurturance. My training is as a clinical social worker, and social workers understand the importance of relationship. When I was in graduate school, I was told that the method of therapy that I used with my clients was less predictive of success than my relationship with the clients. And to me, it's not that much of a stress, stretch <laughs> to apply that maximum about relationships with people to my relationships with my dog. Yet, how many people actually nurture the relationship with their dog? rather than simply expect the dog to respond to their sparkling personality and to be grateful to be in the presence of such wondrous beings as ourselves. It is natural for relationships to change from when people are initially getting to know each other to something different after they've known each other for a while. So I'm not talking just about change. My question is, do we exert effort to maintain our relationship with our dogs, or do we just let things slide? In this segment, we're going to consider two things. The first is, what kind of relationship do you expect to have with your dog? The second is, what do your interactions with your dog say about your relationship? If we perceive ourselves as having a respectful relationship with our dogs, that can't help but affect our choice of training method. There are many different training methods out there, perhaps as many as there are trainers. And there are dog training shows on television and an entire channel devoted to animal-related programming. So I am today asking you to consider your choice of training method. We have choices, and of the many methods out there, which ones are science-based rather than opinion-based, but even more importantly, which ones respect your relationship with your dog? We say that we have this wonderful personal relationship with our dogs, yet how do we demonstrate that relationship in our behavior, in our handling? If we could observe ourselves, what would our behavior reveal about our relationship with our dogs? Earlier today, you identified characteristics of a good relationship. And interestingly enough, you combined, you actually gave more, um, no, you combined almost equally the amount of behavioral as well as emotional aspects of that relationship. Not rules, but principles of handling that are related to what we've been talking about, providing that support emotionally as well as physically. Um, and in my work, I'm constantly analyzing behavior. I love watching behavior. I can spend happy hours watching behavior, particularly of animals, but also of people. Um, and it is my job to do that. I, over the years, have found several behaviors that operationalize a respectful relationship. And what I mean by operationalizing a respectful relationship is that I've broken it down, broken that concept down into specific behaviors. Um, 
and then broadened it again into principles of behavior. These not only, these principles not only demonstrate to an observer that there is a respectful relationship, but also demonstrate to the dog that the handler is there providing that support. So we're going to take a look at the therapy dog's Bill of Rights. I think as we go through these statements, you will see how the steps of teamwork fit in with these Bill of Rights and help you take active steps to assure your therapy dog's welfare and well-being. They all start with, I have a right to a handler who. As a therapy dog, I have the right to a handler who provides gentle training to help me understand what I'm supposed to do. When you look at this photograph, you can see that there is a lot to take into consideration in, with a hospital bed. We as handlers might even feel uncertain about what to do. So imagine how our dogs feel when they encounter equipment on a visit that they've never seen at home. As wonderful as our dogs are, they still need training to be able to live safely in our world. Children need similar training, as the world can be a dangerous place for vulnerable people excuse me, and animals. Neither dogs nor people arrive in the world knowing everything we need to know to make it successfully in today's world. We owe it to our dogs not only to provide training but also to choose a training method that is respectful of our dogs as living beings with intelligence. Thankfully, those methods are available to us.